Today we're going to be talking about liver tumors. This is one of the concepts that students need to understand regarding uh, liver cancers. Uh, the first we're going to be talking about is uh, hepatic adenomas. So I want you to think about liver tumors into two categories. Adenomas, which will be benign tumors, and hepatocellular carcinoma, which are what? Bad stuff. Okay, so let's talk about hepatic adenoma for, for a minute here. So, what really causes hepatic adenoma? Well, it's been really um, associated with what? But control pills. So, we got a 30 year old female, comes to the emergency room, tells you, oh, yeah, I've been um, on birth control pills for about 10 years, you know? You know, and they're telling you, well, I'm starting to have this right upper quarter discomfort. Uh, they feel really uncomfortable. This is kind of, obviously it's not going to tell you what the answer is, but uh, if you eventually discover what's going on, you realize uh, what's about to happen. So, but one of the most important things you need to know about hepatic adenoma is the use of birth control pills. Due to the elevated amount of estrogen, that patients are currently on birth control pills and usually just for a prolonged amount of time. So, history and physical wise, it's really non specific, right upper quadrant pain. You really can't really get much out of it. You do an ultrasound or a CT scan, and right in the liver, it's nice, well rounded, hom homogeneous mass, which is going to be an adenoma. Usually the labs, labs wise, elevation in ALT and AST. So you want to take a note of that. And also the GGT might also be elevated also. Usually this is common in middle-aged women um, and usually associated with a lot of androgen use, pregnancy, diabetes, uh, also glycogen storage diseases. Uh, what you need to really take out of this lecture is to know that these are asymptomatic. You don't have to really take them out, except they start to cause them a lot of pain. Now, if they, they come into the ER and they're complaining a lot of pain, what we have to do is surgically resect it. So that's pretty easy. On the left hand side, we got to worry about hepatic cell carcinoma. Now, in this case, what are the risk factors for cancer of the liver? Well, question What is the most common cause? of liver cancer. Metastasis. You got to know that it's metastasis. On the boards, they're going to ask you, what is the most common cause of liver cancer? Don't, don't tell them hepatic cell or carcinoma. Don't, don't tell them hepatic adenoma. No, it's metastasis, usually from the GI, right? Somebody has colon cancer, right? And what's easy, right? You have to, if you think about it this way, you probably have to remember. You got the entire capillary system and the uh, venous drainage going up into the liver through the hepatic portal vein. So obviously, if anything is going to metastasize, it's going to have to jump in through the wall of the GI tract, right? We can draw it on the board so we can actually make some sense out of this, right? So let's say right? So this is your colon. And your colon's got all this gorgeous looking venous plexus that's going to be draining food, nutrients, digestive products from the GI tract. All these are going to combine. Remember, if you need to understand the uh, anatomy, you can go back to my lecture on portal hypertension. You will see how the superior mesenteric vein and the inferior mesenteric vein join together. Eventually, it goes to the portal vein. And the portal vein is now going to go into the liver. And bam! See how easy for the metastasis to go into the liver? So it's going to be metastasis. Always remember that. Don't let them get you. I just warned you. What are the risk factors for actually developing hepatocellular carcinoma? What is the number one cause of hepatocellular carcinoma? Liver cirrhosis. Scarring of your liver. The liver is hard. Why? It's so many things that can cause it. If you haven't watched the, lead, uh, the video on liver function tests and uh, on 
LFTs and the videos I made on uh, liver uh, liver uh, cirrhosis, hepatic cirrhosis. You gotta watch back. You can click down here on the uh, on this link. So what are the most common? FC, chronic alcohol use, right? Hepatitis, anything that causes inflammation of the liver, drugs, right? But the most common things you need to know is hepatitis C, right? Most patients that have hepatitis C, 80% of them are going to develop hepatocellular carcinoma because the virus is constantly replicating in the liver and constantly inflaming the hepatocyte, causing scarring down of the liver. The liver gets really fibrotic and it's not working. Aflatoxins from mushrooms. They can cause, from foods, different food sources so have aflatoxins. This is not coming to the United States, but you definitely find in most countries. Hepatitis B, right? Remember when they told you medical school? Hepatitis B, about 20% of patients will definitely develop hepatocellular carcinoma down the line. So you want to keep an eye on that. And it's usually the progression, what? Inflammation, hepatitis, hepatitis go to what? Liver cirrhosis, then liver cirrhosis eventually is going to become. So remember, the number one cause is cirrhosis. So those are the risk factors how people develop liver cancer. But how do we diagnose it? All right? Before we actually diagnose this, patient has to come into the ER. Remember how we work in medicine here? They come in, we want to know what the disease process is, the definition on history, what are they going to tell us? Physical exam, what do we see? Right? And then we go into other labs and so we can make a diagnosis and help people. So what are these patients are gonna be complaining of? Right upper quadrant pain. Why are they complaining of right upper quadrant pain? Because the liver is sitting on the right side, right? It makes perfect sense. The liver is sitting right there. So they come come right quadrant pain. Use the document I'm thinking, man, that might be a gallbladder problem. But then you find out they've been drinking alcohol for 50 years every day, oops. That might not be good, right? Or they've had FC for 40 or 50 years. That is not good. Right upper quadrant tenderness, the abdomen is gonna be distended. Remember the liver is shrunk now, it's cirrhotic. Now they give them a lot of ascites. You have to watch the video on liver function test to be able to understand this concept. Why they develop a lot of ascites, right? They're gonna be jaundiced. Just classic symptoms of liver cirrhosis. Right? They can't metabolize bilirubin anymore. So it became jaundice. Right upper quadrant pain, abdominal tenderness, right? They have jaundice because they can't process any bilirubin. All the bilirubin are trying to shut through the liver to get conjugated and conjugated. They can't go through. So they back up, right? They easily bruise. Why do they easily bruise? It's very easy. Remember, my job here is to explain the whys. I can read a textbook out for you, but you're not gonna learn anything. Why this patient says, Doc, I bruise easily. That is the job of the liver. It makes coagulation factors. If you haven't understand the coagulation cascade, go back to the lecture, I already made one, okay? Coagulation factors are needed for you to clot. So you can form a nice fibrin clot. If you don't make coagulation, all, coag all factors, except factor A, Everything else, except factor eight, is made by the liver. So they're gonna have elevated what? PT. Also elevated PTT. Because they're not making all of the coagulation factors. That's called coagulopathy. When you try to pop it their liver, this is how you pop it their liver. You place your fingers like this, right over the skin, and you tap like that. So you, you do that. You pop it, you can feel the border of the liver is extended past the sixth rib, all the way down below the uh, costophrenic angle. You can feel it, it's pretty enlarged. So how do we really make the diagnosis? I don't know you have, you know, a patient has cancer, right? I walk into the room, they just send the pain is right in there. So I'm like, okay, well, you're jaundiced, you, you know, you've been on birth, um, you've been an alcoholic all your life, you have a history of liver cirrhosis, I can't make the diagnosis on physical exams, so we gotta order lab. So what are we gonna order first? We can get an ultrasound, right? That is the most expensive test in the universe. No, it's the cheapest, so we wanna go low. Let's order an ultrasound. We get a right upper quarter an ultrasound. 
right? So we can see what the liver looks like. We can see a mass inside the liver. The liver can look all cirrhotic, but there could be a mass sitting in there. If it's little little dots, that's bad. We're probably not going to see that ultrasound anyway, but we're probably going to see, if we see a mass, it could be cancer, but we don't know yet, right? We could get a CT scan. We get a CT scan, and you see all these little little dots? That is metastasis. That is cancer. They're lighting up on CT. But if you find a mass also sitting in the liver, bam, you got your clue. That's what's causing them pain. A mass is infiltrating. So, you know, it's got somebody taking your space, right? The cancer is sitting there. They're multiplying, having a good time, you know, eating a dinner, having a bottle of champagne. But the problem is they're taking that expense of all their parasites sitting inside the liver. It's causing a lot of pain. Now, the only and the best way to actually definitely know this is cancer is by biopsy. You take a needle, you stick it into the liver, you take a little bite off, pair painful, it's not fun, all right? You take it to the pathologist, the pathologist is gonna take a look at it, and they will be able to tell you it's cancer. And that's how you just knew somebody has liver cancer. Now, there's not much we can do, because we can give them chemo, but the best way to actually do this is to resect it. If the, if the, cell, if the liver uh, cancer is resectable, you want to resect it. But you can also do a liver transplant, right? You give them a new liver. You have to put these guys on transplant list. They need a new liver because right now the liver is gone. It's long gone. It doesn't work anymore. They need a brand new liver. So hopefully they get one. But chemo has not really been shown to be effective and radiation has not been shown to be effective. So how do we keep monitoring these guys to know that the liver cancer is not getting bad? What is the biological marker we use in the hospital to know and monitor liver cancers? You should know this. Very easy. Alpha fetal protein, right? This is the same bad boy that patients with Down syndrome, you detect when they're inside the, inside the uterus, narcotranslucency, all that good stuff, right? It's also made in the liver. So we constantly monitor the levels of AFP in this patient to make sure they're not having a liver recurrence. So what complications can really come from patients having a paracellular carcinoma? A GI bleed, right? They can have liver failure and also metastasis. And that is the end of our lecture. Just in summary, what did we talk about today? We talked about hepatic adenoma, which is caused by what? Taking too much blood control pills. So you gotta be careful putting people on blood control pills, okay? Right? It's, if it's not symptomatic, leave them alone. She's a young woman, all right? She's a small little mass in the liver. It's to start to cause them pain, you have to take it out. A paracellular carcinoma, on the other hand, it's caused by cirrhosis, hepatitis C, anything that makes the liver shrink and gets damaged and scar up, right? How do we diagnose it? On physical exam, it's non-specific. It's just like the symptoms they develop from cirrhosis. So what do we do? We check the AFP levels, check the ALT liver function test, right? We do a CT scan or ultrasound of the abdomen and you eventually do a biopsy. After doing a biopsy, it tells you exactly where it is and then you do a liver section of the tumor or give a liver transplant. And that will be the end of our lecture.